Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Trackman44 here. You know, I blew one of the lift cylinders on the boom on that 580 case backhoe. So today we're going to go back to business of taking that thing apart and then uh, get some parts started and get that thing rebuilt. So just hang right in there. We'll get with it. This is a series of spanner wrenches that you'll need to hit just about every every cylinder you have on your tractor right here. There's obviously a variety of uh, diameters of the cylinders. And if you have this set right here, you'll be able to spin these off of virtually any one of the cylinders and, and make a repair. These here have hardened steel pins inside here that line up with holes inside the head. And you'll be able to use a half inch breaker bar and break those things loose. Providing this will give way for us. Uh, there ain't nothing ever says it will. So what you got to do is you got to pick whichever one looks like it's going to be the, uh, that near is too small. We'll go one size up here. This one right here is the one that fits in the holes. And what you'll want to have will be a, a workbench like this. It's got a dual set of vices. You put them on like that and you get them tied down good and tight. And like as not, this is not going to come apart. If you get really, really lucky, it will. Sometimes I get lucky. It's moving. Probably got to leak a lot of oil out right there. On some that are really, really tough, you can take a chisel and you can actually drive a chisel and kind of start breaking it loose. And once you get it broke loose, you can use your spanner to go ahead and take it the rest of the way. Here comes the oil I told you to be in there. It's probably half a gallon of oil just come flying out. But sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. You see my little come along there, got to tie it tied onto the back end of the truck. So I've got the other end of this tied to the base of my two post car lift. So something's going to give, and if we're lucky, it's going to be that ram from inside the tube and not something else. Thing at all. This is a 1500 pound coughing hoist. Nothing yet. I'm expecting these little nylon strap here, even though I've got it triple strength, I think it's going to break. I can hear this popping. There she goes, she broke. I gotta come up with something a little bit heavier right here. What I did, I took an old uh, V-belt, like a fan belt. Now you can't use these for lifting, but whenever you don't want to damage something, you can use it for pulling. I don't know how much they'll hold, but we'll see. Ah, she moved. There she comes again. Now that we got this apart, I'll have to take this bolt off of right here and that'll allow this to come off. This will have to be all repacked. And then this end here, the this part right here will have to come apart and I'll have to replace the seals and everything that's inside there. Take extreme care with these stainless steel rods. Don't jam them, beat them into anything. Make sure you always set them on a soft surface. In this case, I got them big thick leather, leather gloves underneath there. But there you have it, a fully disassembled uh, cylinder. Hey, I guess you can tell by the backdrop that we got a little bit of a thunderstorm coming through. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty noisy too. So at any rate, hey, it's a perfect day uh, to work on that cylinder. UPS delivered my, uh, my repair kit last night, just about dark as a matter of fact. So uh, today's a pretty good day to see if we can go about the business of putting this thing back together. Like I said before, one of the main things you want to be concerned about when you're messing with hydraulics is always cleanliness. You see I got a rag stuff in here to wick out any of the oil and then drop it into the sawdust and I keep the rag on the end of it just to make sure no dust and everything gets pulled in because you're not doing other kind of work around here in the meantime. And also on the other end of the cylinder you can see the hydraulic fittings uh, are actually covered with the rag and everything as well. 
and even the packing, the old original packing, and everything right here that we're going to be replacing, uh, it cover, it's covered as well. These are pretty much all the components to the new kit. Uh, up on the gland end, we'll have a, a flat spacer washer, we have an O-ring, uh, and then we'll have a seal, uh, we'll have a wiper ring here which goes on the outside, and we'll have a seal that actually inserts down in the middle, and that's a very difficult one to get in, is this, this seal. It's got a retention casting that it's got to go in between. Very difficult to get there. And then these will be the uh, the actual packing here. And they're shaped like a V. You can see there's a male and a female. There's an angle on one and a V notch on the other. So they all stack together and create this assembly right here. I don't know if you guys have a set of seal drivers or not. These are a cheap general set that actually come from Harbor Freight. But even a cheap set is very, very good. I've used everything you can imagine to drive seals in, usually sockets, uh, sockets of various sizes. But these things here, even though they're cheap, they're very well made, and I would recommend them to anybody. I've had these for years and years, and I've put in dozens and dozens of seals on virtually everything with them. This particular one here is gonna take 59, 59 millimeters. Fits perfectly over the, over the opening, and because this wiper actually goes in opposite of a seal, normally with the seal, you'll have a steel spring. That's Mother Nature talking to you. You have a steel ring around the perimeter, and it, this one here is does, and they go to the inside. So that steel ring usually goes to the inside. You see this finished area here on the outside of what you're, you're sealing, of the sack shaft you're sealing. But on this guy here, it goes in opposite of that. So this is going to sit down here, put a little film of oil on that. We're going to use this 59 millimeter to uh, drop that in there. Like I said, these are just a cheap set of, of uh, sealed drivers. But boy, they are worth their weight in gold. Especially comes in handy in this situation because we're actually installing them in the reverse. You've only got this little thin, about a 32nd of an inch ring to catch on to. And this 59 millimeter is going to catch it just fine. See you get a little oil and get that uh, soaked with a little bit of oil. With a great degree of, degree of difficulty, I was able to get that seal down inside that recessed area. That was a fight. I'm not lying to you. That was a fight. Have to make sure that goes in level. And it may go a little bit crooked, but you can correct it. There you go. That part's done. Okay, well we got the uh, the spacer washer, the rubber spacer washer, as well as the O-ring back in place. So the packing gland is ready to go, ready to reassemble. You'll want to coat this with uh, coat this with oil. May need a little bit of a shove to get it started. There we go. We cleared it does not hurt to be liberal with a little bit of oil. It's important to get these on in the reverse order in which they came off. So the first one is going to be the wide one. And then it appears to be four, all with the pointy portion going into the taper of the original one. last one to go on has a flat surface. So these will have to be saturated with oil, completely saturated, so I'm going to do that real quick. Now with the entire assembly soaked, soaked in oil and reassembled and reasonably clean, actually thoroughly clean, you can thread this back onto here. That one last piece I just popped off of here, this guy right here has got to be replaced. I'm going to go ahead and put some lubrication in and around that. Like I said before, there's many ways of doing this and the professionals don't do it like this, I'm sure. It's better if you have a workbench, it's not on rollers.
So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this in a little bit, yeah? But now that we got the, the packing land on the end, I don't have to worry about it pulling in crooked. It's going to pull the ram in perfectly straight now. As a matter of fact, on a solid table, two guys would probably be able to push this the rest of the way in. This can come off of here. I'll go ahead and tighten this gland the rest of the way down. I know it wasn't a lot of fun hanging around, but you know, there's nothing better to do on a nice rainy afternoon. You can tell, man, it's been thunderstorming and lightning. There's been a couple of them pretty doggone close, you know, at least it sounded like it anyway. But uh, this thing is ready for the wrecking crew. This is snug down, that's an old ring seal, so it just has to be barely beyond snug. There's not a big deal to it. But once you get the hydraulic lines hooked up, there's no big deal. Start the tractor and go ahead and, and extend or retract whatever you need to do. It's not a big deal. I know I didn't uh, show a lot of guys anything they didn't know. And many, many guys watching the channel can do this a whole heck of a lot better. There's absolutely no doubt. But you know what? The whole thing about my channel is just a poor boy getting by uh, and spending the least amount of money you know, possible to, to get by. And so uh, that having been said, you know what? This thing is just about ready for the record proof. And this is Tractor Man 44. And I'm out of here.